the magic is in the work that you're avoiding. We are leaving this in 2023. And she knew that wasn't the same symbol. Vanilla sex was not it. This is very sure. Period of stagnation. Push them on anyone. What's this up like these? hello hello and welcome to the channel my name is yudi and i go by yudi on the globe here on my other social media platforms so make sure you subscribe to me here go ahead and hit that like button and you know what i'm gonna cut to the chase this is gonna be a very long chit chatty video and hopefully you guys learn more about me and hope i learn more about you guys in the future but that being said go ahead and grab your snacks grab your drinks if you're gonna be um cleaning in the back go ahead and increase the volume because we're gonna have a nice little sit down chat today so today's video is gonna be a wrap of 2023 you know how, like apple music or spotify will do a wrap of the songs and artists you listen to the most kind of like that but i want to put my spin on it so we're gonna talk about fashion we're gonna talk about music and we're gonna talk about other things that i feel like you guys can learn more about me and we can just you know share more freely about what's going on with me what's going on with the channel and before we jump right in i'm telling y'all right now this is the third time of me in this video so it's third time's gotta be a charm it's gonna be a charm so the very first wrap i want to start with are designer houses that were constantly on my radar last year the top three were fendi loewe and bottega so with fendi i most especially really really gravitated towards the zuka print i feel like it's timeless that print can work as a texture and it's also kind of casual i just wrapped up making a what's in my bag plus styling for my fendi mama baguette so if you're interested in that go check that out and i also have a couple bags that i would love to have in my collection moving on to loewe okay, i feel like loewe is the perfect mix of when fashion meets fun it meets character it meets quirkiness so 2023 is when i was all in when it came to the puzzle bag i would love to have a couple in my collection but when i go across all the sizes that the puzzle bag comes in everywhere from the mini up to the large I feel like those bags look especially nice in your basic everyday colors and some of your herb tones. Everything from, from that rich caramel tan color, the black, also the taupe, and some of their khaki colors. I feel like those are the staple colors when it comes to puzzle bags. I would even throw in the orange color for the mini chef's kiss. But but hear me out hear me out we're talking about the basics in your staple colors when i look at the puzzle bag the puzzle bag is not something that i might pick up for a night out or for cocktail evening kind of events i think of it more as a casual daytime bag so with that being the case one of the things in my mind i'm just like with the puzzle bags especially in those staple colors you are bound if you're a black handbag kind of girl you're bound to have multiple black handbags if you're a brown accessory kind of person you're bound to have a lot of brown bags so that in mind especially when it comes to the small version when i look at the bag it's more fun it's more casual it's, but for me i feel like on the collector's side i would love to have a couple color blocked puzzle bags in my collection especially in a size small now the other thing with loewe 2023 i knew i wanted something loewe even if it's not a puzzle bag something loewe in my collection and the other thing that i do want i do want a good blue based very very rich red leather handbag in my collection something on the on the small to medium side, like to medium. So I was doing my usual scrolling through fashion file and I saw this Loewe wallet on chain. It was a style that I had not seen much before. And on top of that, even though it was a wallet on chain, they had other wallets that were much smaller that cost more. The bag was like about 300, 320. And then I just had a moment, I was like, this year has been crazy. Let me treat myself because I know I want something in my closet from Loewe. I know I want a red bag. So this makes sense. So I decided to treat myself, I got the bag. And I got the bag and it was so small. Like when I tell you, it was it was beautiful, but it could not fit my essentials. As in, it could not fit my phone, my AirPods and my keys at once. And I was like, dang, this is a deal breaker. So typically for me, when I'm like, okay, I gotta return this item because it's not working out. I feel good inside. It's almost like, even though I'm just getting my money back, it's like I'm getting paid. They're like, you know, girl man. So usually I'm proud of myself because I'm like, I made the decision. I know I'm not going to use it. I'm being responsible. I'm returning it. And all is well in the world. When I return this bag, you, there was pain in my heart. I did not feel good at all, but I knew it was not a bag that I can get used out of. And on top of that, the bag chain was silver. And I was like, oh, I can always change that to gold. That wasn't a deal breaker for me. The deal breaker was that I could not fit my phone and my AirPods in it at once. If only it was like half an inch bigger. 
and then on top of that it was such a good price i got it for like a third of retail price i think it was going for like 900 up to a thousand and i'm just like and it was the perfect color of red so that one that one that one hurt a lot and the other thing with loewe we know loewe for their belts especially the obi belt the one thing i'm surprised about i think it's called the reversible and the graphic belt I'm surprised that I don't see more people talking about this or using it. Now, when it comes to the reversible belt, I feel like that's a lot of bang for your buck. The belts that I've seen have either been like black with brown, which are very staple colors, or like a black with a cream or ivory, that you literally can just reverse the belt and you have two belts for the price of one. So I'm surprised I'm not seeing people talk about this belt as much. Then when it comes to the graphic belt, I feel like the graphic belt, again, that quirkiness, that fun. I love how it looks almost like 3D printing in metal, but at the time, top of the belt you see the leve but from the front on you just have all these different lines but just the idea and the craftsmanship behind it i think it's a fun take so i'm surprised i don't see many people talking about these two particular belts and last but not least we have bottega when i was doing my fall strength video i was really paying attention to the runways like never before and from doing that i like i think i'm bottega girly because for the most part when i see people talk about bottega i usually see people just talking about the jody bag or maybe a couple of their sunglasses or some shoes those little fishnet shoes the, the you know the ones i'm talking about and the stretch ones okay girl so those are usually the only ones that i hear people talking about or i see talked about the most but i remember looking at the runway there's this one chunky ugly sweater so mixed between red and a deep cream or beige and it had black it was very chunky and wooly when i saw it on the runway it just left a lasting imprint in my mind especially with the holiday sales of last year i feel like Bottega really does have some nice pumps some nice heels some nice boots and booties okay girl <laughs> some nice boots and booties that i don't see people talk about a lot and they were going on great sales so i'm like okay so after seeing all these different pieces from bottega and really paying attention to their runway last year i feel like bottega is like an approachable saint laurent when i think of saint laurent i think of like power moves power suit like workplace giant boss lady you know business attire that kind of thing i think of a power suit when i think of saint laurent really at the forefront However, but I feel like Bottega is like the approachable Saint Laurent. Like Saint Laurent is that boss lady who manages all the meetings, all the big clients, all this stuff. Bottega, however, does all those things, but is not serious 24 seven. Like the Bottega girl can handle all the large clients and the big meetings and still turn up on the weekend or, you know, head to happy hour after work. Like she still knows how to have fun. That is what I'm getting from Bottega and I'm enjoying every bit of it. So those are my top three designers that were constantly on my radar. Up in through my wish list, all those things. And I'm pretty sure that will follow through to this year, 2024. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about designers that I was introduced to last year that I didn't know of, but I wanna know more about them. I'm gonna keep an eye out. I'm gonna keep my good eye on them. The first one was Robert Woon. Now, Robert Woon and his ruffles. I really didn't get the full impact of this until I was making my textures and proportions video. And I saw the number of people that he has styled that I'm familiar with. So for instance, Beyonce on the Renaissance tour, Issa Rae, Burna Boy, Tam, Quinta, Quinta from Abbott. Y'all know Abbott's back on TV. I love that show. And who else, who else, who else, who else? Lauren Hill, like Robert goes off with them ruffles. That's one thing he gonna do. He gonna go off with them ruffles. Ooh. So I'm new to Robert Moon, but I'm loving his style. Oh, I forgot to mention Tracy Ellis Ross, of course. So yeah, next up I came across Dwell. Well, I came across her when I was doing my research for a Renaissance video. Y'all yeah, still haven't gotten that video yet. I think I filmed it in November or December. Charlotte, that video tried to take me and my laptop out the game. We're still working on that. It's still under construction. Y'all gonna get it. <laughs> Y'all gonna get it eventually because I put hard work into that video. So I came across her based on some of her fits for the Renaissance tour. And also I kind of liked her personal style too. So Yolanda is someone who I'm keeping an eye out for. Now next up, I was hearing a lot about Alaya last year. And prior to last year, I didn't really know too much about Alaya. Even when I went on the website, I didn't really see anything that like called out to me. But there are some throwback and vintage pieces that Alaya has that I'm all here for. There's this dress that I saw one of the youth up wearing, or I think it's in their intro, and it's like this black and white dress. And one thing about it, I love a good black and white print. Like if you can make black and white together and not look boring, not look corporate, 
I'm here for it. So I didn't know for the longest to like literally like yesterday, the day before, that one of the dresses I believe the youth dress was wearing was an Aliyah dress. So Aliyah's on my radar. I haven't seen anything on the website currently that I'm like really gravitating towards. Oh, but now that I think about it, their recent runway, I think in January, I believe they were the ones who had the 3D dress that kind of like wrapped around like a, a sleeve. You know those little um, bands that you could just tap on your arm and they just kind of slunk around? Yeah, they had something like that. I think, I think that was them. I think so. Now, another person that snuck up on me was Dries Van Noten. And this design particularly was kind of like, you know, when you're not familiar with something, but you might have heard it, but it never stuck. And then you become familiar with whatever word or whatever thing it is, and you start seeing it everywhere. So I remember I was trying to film like a dupes video based on like, you know, some fast fashion places like um, Mango, Zara, all these things. I started it, I kind of talked myself out of it because I was trying to read the room, but read the room too hard. Like when you guys come to my videos, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to buy stuff every time you watch the video because I know for me sometimes that gets annoying I never want you guys to feel that way but I was thinking about doing a dupes video on like handbags and shoes and I kind of talked myself out of it because I'm like I don't know if people be interested in it or you know just reading the room on the economy but if you guys still want to see that you know let me know but I was doing that and I came across a shoe and I thought it was Bottega then I looked into it more they were Dries Van and I was like hold on so then I started doing a little bit more digging a little bit more digging then I realized that I had heard the name before or at least the name just started popping up everywhere after I found these shoes I feel like Janae from High Low Lux she has a jacket that is Dries Van Noten but when I've heard it in the past the, the name just never stuck same with Carolyn Gray there are these tortoise shell knee-high boots that she got for her birthday some years ago and they're from the same brand and I it never clicked because I remember seeing the video long ago just the name never stuck so now I know and then also Van Noten Van Noten got some fragrances that I want to smell and he has a discovery kit out so we, we're gonna come back to fragrances later on so just just pocket that one for now so next up in this category I want to talk about beauty on the glow the channel <laughs> so we're going to talk about some of the 2023 ups and downs for the channel as well as some areas that i feel like i can improve or incorporate new things so so my major major up highlight of last year when it comes to this channel was my neutrals video you guys showed up and showed out that video started doing numbers like within like three days and by the end of the week i said what's going on going on so yeah i i enjoyed making that video i didn't think it was gonna like get the traction that it did but i'm so happy for you guys showing up the way that you did so i really really appreciate you guys another positive for the channel from last year was i feel like i've gotten a little bit quicker with my editing and like a little bit more concise a little bit more um quicker to make decisions and you know what to keep what not to keep so i feel like my editing skills definitely improved last year let me know if you guys saw the difference and then i also saw that my trends video did really really well so typically i don't really jump on too many trends there may be a couple that i like but sitting down and actually doing that video it really got me more in tuned and paying so much more attention to the runway and being able to connect that to like my closet things that i'm seeing in a store things that are more affordable all that really connected so many fashion inspirations and just things to try out and things that i enjoyed and just was helpful to see and get out there to you guys so i enjoyed making my trends video and i think i might keep that up and also last year i really did enjoy playing around with different setups i currently have this setup that i'm you know playing around with and i think i like it you guys let me know what you think i think this is this is gonna be around for the long run i think so so those are some of the things that i feel like were my ups and my positives of last year as it concerns the channel now let's talk about some of these downs let's talk about these downs now when it comes to music when it comes to music and being copyright and restriction and all this stuff that is always gonna be something that I have to figure out because these people be jumping on me. They be jumping on me, okay? And one of my downs from last year was finding ways to be consistent despite life setbacks. We'll talk about some of them setbacks more later on in this video when we get real serious. And while we're on things to improve and incorporate this 2024, I really wanna show more of my personality through my videos. I feel like, especially with the style guys, since I want it to be a clear cut, easy reference, get everything at once, I, it feels like I have all these points that I wanna make sure I cover and i feel like when i'm doing those videos i sound super professional and super formal and and i really want to have more laid back videos for you guys to see more of my personality where we're just chilling we just at home we vibing y'all just got me up in the background or we just like having a casual conversation like now because either i really want to work on you guys seeing 
other sides of my personality. I hope you guys are seeing me now. But like, we're not serious 24 seven. You, you can't be, you can't all, like, let's last a little bit, you know? I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm still working on being comfortable in front of the camera. It's, it's still a thing for me. So if, if you guys can't tell, that means I'm doing kind of good. But you know, these are things that I know I can, you know, still work on. And this year, I would love to have some sort of partnership. I don't know in what or where yet, but it would be cool to have a partnership, you know? Why not? But I know as it gets to that point, I really have to work on just my consistency overall. That's really like the answer to a lot of things. So, um, who y'all think I should partner with? I think would be a good match for me, like as far as like a partnership with y'all. Like, what y'all trying to say? What y'all think? <sighs> And this year I want to do more like try on and outfit infos for you guys. So that's something I'm working on. I put one out. What was it? I did a fall and winter one. And I was really proud of it. So you guys give that video some love if you haven't already before it gets warm out. So that's something I want to do a little bit more of and work on like, you know, how I want to present it and you know, whatever ideas I have to give you guys more outfit inspiration. And the other thing I feel like I really owe it to myself because I have so much footage and content of things that I never got around to editing or I didn't know how to edit or it sat for so long maybe like a month or something like oh it's old for me to post it or whatever the case may be so one of the things I really want to work on this year or and I also feel like I owe to myself is making sure that the content that I've shot that I've put work into I actually see it all the way to fruition all the way to completion and get that stuff out to you even if it's old so I'm really proud that I posted my first vlog. I kind of like crossed that barrier. So I want to post more vlogs for you guys. I have travel videos. <laughs> I have travel videos from like two, three years ago that even though some of the perspectives and how it was shot, I probably wouldn't do it the same. I kind of feel like I owe it to myself to still put those things out. Like even this video, I wanted this video up in January. This is my third time recording this. So, you know, third time is a charm, but I recorded it in January and I was ready to get it out the way, edit it, get it up to you guys. And I just looked at it. I was like, I'm not feeling the lighting. I'm not feeling my hair. I can't put this out. And honestly, it might've been for a reason because I was going through a lot when I first recorded that video. <laughs> maybe a little bit too much. Maybe I would have been oversharing, but even though I wanted this video up in January, you guys are probably gonna see it in March because it's the end of February right now. But I feel like these are things that I owe to myself and I, I wanna make sure I see through, you know? I also wanna incorporate showing more of my interests. Um, and I feel like you guys are seeing more of that in this video too. Um, but making sure it's something that kind of like flows into the channel well, where you guys are seeing more of me and learning more about me. And hopefully you guys are entertained or can take something away. And um, last but not least, I wanna work my thumbnails. Like, you know, y'all be watching. I appreciate y'all because y'all come back to watch. We here, we're locked in. For the people who are not locked in quite yet, you know, they ain't got the telephone call from the friend, friend, friend yet. For them, like, working on just making sure, like, after putting hours and hours into editing, that people don't roll past my video just because the thumbnail isn't as inviting or alluring as it could be. That's something I'm constantly working on is like making my thumbnails a little bit better. Something that makes people want to be like, hmm, I wonder what this is about. I want to tune in to like what's going on over here. So those are my 2023 ups, downs, and improvements for the channel. Okay, next up, let's get to the real thing. Let's talk about music. I told you guys music is very big for me. So it's gonna be a long session. It's gonna be long. So I stream on Spotify. So when I got my list back, my top artists were with Kid, Beyonce, June Freedom, Sir, and Victoria Monet. And you don't need to get your rats back. It's kind of like you want to confirm whether or not it's true, <laughs> as if they don't have the data of all the streams you did. This is very sure. First off, Wizkid has hits. Okay, Wizkid has hits for days. He makes the kind of music that makes you want to be on a yacht. On a yacht. Somewhere on somebody's island. And you want to be at what is it called? Yacht fest? Whatever the heck. You want to be a living your best life when going through your hair all those things that's the kind of music that we just get makes he really does now june freedom june freedom sound is everything to me now when i first heard his music i didn't know what he looked like so i didn't know you know nothing about it. then i saw a picture of him i said let me investigate he was kate verdian that makes sense because i also love amira andrade love her style love her music they're both kate verdian i said okay that makes sense. And I was like reading his like Spotify description. He was described as a melting pot of alt pop, world beat, zook, kizomba, hip hop, and Afro soul all mixed together. You have me right there. Then on top of that, he sings in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and other languages. 
I said, that's why I miss with him. That's why I am so tuned in when it comes to his music. So if you guys have not listened to June Freedom, he is a vibe. Listen to him. Because after seeing all that, why wouldn't I like him? Now getting into some of my top songs, sometimes you forget what songs you had on repeat. My top song was Never Give Up by Chronix. If that don't tell you what kind of year I had last year, baby. Anytime I didn't feel like getting up, anytime I didn't feel like commuting, anytime I just did not feel like getting up and just adulting and just doing all the stuff you have to do. That was my anthem. I put Never Give Up and that is what pushed me through the first half of last year. That tells you what kind of year I had. It really does. Chronics held it down for me all of last year. Um, next up I had Bad Bad, Love That. I had Big Kala by Odumodu. Odumodu. <laughs> He's an interesting somebody. But Big Kala, I had that on repeat. You know the best songs are like the shortest songs. That song is like one minute, two minute. But that song is the very pop yo ish kind of song. You know when like you in the gym and you need that extra motivation or you just gotta remind yourself who you are? Yeah, now that's when I put on Big Kala. Like the beginning, I can't even remember. The first two lines had me. Let me see if I can find it. He said, anything you get, I get down times two. Any pressure where you bring, I they cancel. I said, hey, that's my song. That's my song. When you want to talk your mess, do you just have to remind yourself who you are? Yeah, that, that was a song. I also had balance. So with this kid, his music, especially the last album was like Money and Ego. And then the one before that was Made in Lagos those albums you can have your favorite song that you always have on repeat then when you revisit those albums out comes another song that you have on repeat that you didn't have on repeat before not that you skipped it but you know i just feel like whiskey makes great music next up i want to talk about at least at the time we filmed this video this was back in january the songs or the music that i had on repeat the very first one i had on the when I tell you I love me some Amma Ray because her range is crazy. One minute you're doing all Tay, maybe R&B, then we're doing rock, then we're doing pop. She is all over the place and I love the range. Angels in Tibet, Princess Going Digital, and I've been listening to um What A Lot, Water From Wine. Then she has like big stuff. She has so many great hits on that album alone. I am such an Amma Ray fan from this album to all of the collabs she's done in the past. Next up, I have Black Sam. Black Sam, I think he's from Florida. Maybe a few years ago, I came across Bleach. I was like, okay, I like this sound. Then I came across one of his recent EPs last year, and I said, hold on, it really is a vibe. And you guys know what? I'm gonna try and play like snippets of the music or like put them somewhere on the screen. There is an area where there's absolutely no sound. Just, just know some people jumped on me for using them people music. Just, just know that's what happened. I don't want no problems. I was also listening to a lot of Rihanna J and Joyce Rice, like their older stuff to get old to me. Now, when it comes to other people, people who are new to me, Destin Conrad, did nobody call me? Did nobody tell me nothing? How did I not know about Destin Conrad? His music? Oh, I'm here for it, and I'm so upset that I didn't know about him sooner. I found out about him, like, on the tail end of last year, and I'm like, what rock have I been? I do tend to be on the rock stuff. But I thought like I should have known who he was. I should have known that name at least two years ago. What's going on? Another one for me is Tyler. Y'all know I love Tyler. Water did his thing, but what I've had on repeat, Truth or Dare is such a bop. I really do enjoy that song. If you guys haven't heard it, Y'all listen to it. Go listen to it. It's really good. And other music. So at the time, when Lauren Hill brought YG Marley on stage to kind of sneak peek his new song, when she brought him on stage, I feel like I can't remember the last time I've been so excited for music to release. Now that I've kind of gotten used to hearing it more and more, because I just hear it all the time on my feed, I feel like it's one of those songs that, I don't know if you guys ever have songs that you like more live than you like like the studio version like for me flowers by miley cyrus i realized i like the grammys i like that more than the studio version at least the beginning of it next so big x the plug i was bumping him all of last year again that's more of like talk your mess kind of music it's like that houston dallas that texas sound yeah i was also listening to is it shot from detroit shot from detroit gets me hyped up i don't think i can play her music on the channel but no we we crank her all the way up we crank her all the way up. You need some hot music, you need some gym music. Yeah, put that on. Put both of them on. Next up, Jungle. I really did enjoy Jungle last year. Yeah, whatever sound that is. Yeah, Jungle, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Next up, I have to talk about Ebo Taylor. And with Ebo Taylor, I feel like one of the things I love about artists is having sound recognition. It's like you can hear a song, not know who the artist is, and you're like, this sounds like such and such, and it actually be them. I love when that happens. He's a Ghanaian artist that does highlight sound. So I remember one day I just let my music play and I think I would, I ended up on the like Yara or something. Then I just went down his whole catalog of music. So when I came across his songs, I didn't know it was them. I said, this sounds like someone I know. That was it. So then also around that time, I did come across and I ended up listening to a lot of African classics that came out around the 60s and the 80s. And at that time, a lot of the music coincided with many African countries finally gaining their independence and also revolutionary thoughts and ideas gaining traction. So it was lots of African jazz, salsa, all those things. And some of the main people that came out of that was Manu Dingbango, and he has so many hits that have been sampled. He's Cameroonian. And then also I came across, okay, I don't know how to pronounce it, but Bala et Seth Baladin. They're from Guinea and I love their music. And you have definitely heard one of their samples used by J. Cole on his song, Can't Get Enough. That's a sample of Paulette from their band. So. I was on that wave and I, I I loved every second of it. TikTok has put me on to a lot of music. And with that on my timeline, I had a lot of Arabic songs and I was here for all of it. One of them being Danny Salestini. That song was blasting throughout this household and throughout my car. But if you know, you know, Danny Salestini, I was blessed in that. Another person who I came across was Shireen or Sharon. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she be going off. She be going all the way off. The two main songs that I got from her are Kalam and Ed and um, Sabra Alil. And with Sabra Alil, someone did a mix of one of Busta Rhymes songs and I'll see if I can play a clip for it. And I'm like, that whole thing, it's, it's the vibe, it's the vibe, it's the vibe. Now moving on, some of the memorable performances for me of 2023. Hey y'all, this video is getting a bit long so I decided to do a part two. I'll meet you guys over there and I'll keep sharing some of my highlights of last year and some of my hopes and goals for 2024. All right, see you guys.